It's the night after Saturday Night's Main Event. The final Saturday Night's Main Event on the docket. If you want to know what happened at Saturday Night's Main Event, then stay tuned for the Saturday Night's Main Event recap video coming to the channel very soon. With that out of the way, let's move into Monday Night Raw. And now with Monday Night Raw halfway completed, because well, I'm not stupid. I know booking half of it off camera and then rest and the and then putting together the rest of it on camera makes for an easier video and a shorter video than it would if I did than it would if I did it the other way. So with that being said, let's continue with this week's episode of Raw. Um, well, why did I go there? Um, okay, yeah, I remember now. You got Vader and Chris Candido's feud coming along. Now Vader... Uh, did he fight one of the Harris brothers already? He did not. Alright then. You know, I'm not gonna make it, to make him talk in the third person, I'm gonna make him talk in the first person, because this is supposed to be like Vader took cutting a promo of Candido running away, and Next time we are together, I will make sure he can't. So basically, in that promo, Vader hypes up his next match with Candido and challenges one of the Harris brothers to a match. Uh, I didn't want to click there. I wanted to click here. Um... Well, Brian Clark didn't compete at the pay-per-view, so let's put Brian Clark in a match. And... You know what? Let's put Brian Clark in a match against Henry Godwin. Um, uh, hmm. Only because of what happened earlier in the show, I'm going to change the match. And I'm gonna book him against. I'm gonna book him against Rocco Rock instead. Uh, Brian Clark gets the win. Managerial interference. Uh, I want to go here and just add him as his manager because I have no other plans for Andre. So, let's just send him out there one more time and then send him home, after the fact. Um, how do I get there? How do I get there? How do I get there? Okay. Ric Flair, me and Jane, and Flair talks about Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart. And no one hurt. I've been a busy man, Mean Gene. And everyone wants a piece of the world champion. You know, basically, he talks about the fact that. Shawn Michaels, uh, here, with the fact that Shawn Michaels mentions wanting to challenge for the world title, he mentions Shawn Michaels, he mentions Bret Hart, because Bret Hart's still in the title picture, and he mentions Owen Hart, who 
uh, Fort Flair at Saturday Night's Main Event. Dave Finley versus Shawn Michaels. And we set it up. Shawn Michaels. Cheap. DQ. Interference. The Undertaker. And we end the show with this. Wait, no. Here we go. Uh, you know what? No. That's not what I'm going to do. I had an idea, but then I changed my mind, and now I don't know how to end the show. Um, hmm. Hmm. How do we end this show? Um. You know what? I say we end the show. Um. Excuse me. I say we end the show by just stretching out some of the matches and giving them more time because the initial plan was to do something that brings people back next week to end the show with a question mark but I changed my mind and decided to go with the slow build which I initially thought of um, which I initially thought of as the plan rather than the quick common mystery who done it angle I'm not going to say who it was going to be involving. I'm just going to say that I'm not doing it anymore. And as far as The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels, that is also going to be a little bit of a slow thing. So I guess in a way, it's ending with The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels with the question mark of why did The Undertaker get involved in Shawn Michaels' match tonight? You know what? I guess... Eh, you know what? That's, that's unnecessary, I guess. Um, so, let's just jump into the show. Mongo beats Mabel. In the pre-show. For those who may have missed it, Mongo, Bubba Dudley, New Jack, uh, Dirty White Boy, uh, Mongo, New Jack, Dirty White Boy, Bubba Dudley, Bull Buchanan and um, Alex Wright all competed in a mini tournament on WWF Metal for a contract with the WWE. And at uh, uh, and that's why Mongo is in the company because he was a part of the tournament, but he did not win. To find out who won. You gotta see the recap show from Saturday Night's Main Event. But either way, now it's time for Monday Night Raw, and we kick off with Owen Hart wanting a piece of Ric Flair, I mean wanting a piece of his brother, blaming his brother who was guest referee last night. But instead of getting his brother, I mean, blaming his brother for his loss last night, it, but instead of getting his brother, he gets Ricky Steamboat, and Steamboat lays down the challenge for In Your House, Night of Legends, in two weeks. Tony DeVito beats Steve Armstrong in another in, in what I believe is Tony DeVito's first victory in quite a while. I just want to point out, actually, before I get to this segment and explain this segment, um, 
I think if that's not close to a sellout, it is pretty. It is a sellout, so that's pretty good. Uh, sellouts are always good. But either way, uh, Gene Oakland introduces Scott Taylor, who, uh, well, first Gene Oakland announces that J.J. Dillon has put in place sort of a new superstar initiative and some new faces will be showing up over the next couple of weeks and it starts with Scott Taylor who gets the opportunity to get on the microphone with me and Gene and introduce himself and Scott Taylor goes up against Mikey Whipwreck and Mikey Whipwreck gets the victory which is also Mikey Whipwreck's first victory in a couple of weeks you know not everybody has to make their debut and um not everybody has to make their debut and go on a, and start on an undefeated streak because if you do it too often then the undefeated streak will mean less um but either way you know Basically, you know, you overdo the undefeated thing, then the undefeated streak won't mean as much. So that's why you introduce people unique ways to make them memorable. And that's what I'm doing with Scott Taylor. Uh, speaking of memorable, the Rock and Roll Express are the new tag team champions, and they have no shortage of challengers, as both Diesel and Ahmed Johnson and the Godwins want a shot at the Rock and Roll. Speaking of cha tag team champions, the former tag team champions, the Hollywood Blondes, now have to figure out what the heck they're doing next. Now that they're now that they're not in the tag team title picture, Eddie Guerrero go, gets another continues his positive momentum and his continuous traction upward by defeating Butch Reed. Shawn Michaels, as I mentioned earlier, Shawn Michaels threw his name in the hat that he wants to challenge the winner of Bret Hart and Ric Flair for the WWF title. You know, as Jeff Jarrett's out of the way, now he wants to focus his eyes on the biggest prize in the game. Steve Austin gets a victory. You know, they, the first thing to do with the Hollywood Blondes now that they're out of the tag team title picture is to start giving them wins again because they've lost I wouldn't say they've been losing a lot more than normal I'm just going to say that they've been losing when it counts so you know pay-per-views but well actually they won at Wrestlemania it was just by disqualification um, or count out or well, one of the two um but my point is, you gotta get him back on the winning track, and it starts tonight with Steve Austin and David San Martino. Mark Merrow is ready for his match against Shane Douglas. No holds barred later tonight. The two former tag team partners finally collide. Um, in recent weeks, anytime Candido's group has been out there, or these guys have been out there, it's always Candido cutting off Brian Lee, or Candido taking the spotlight, or Candido speaking his mind, and, you know, Brian Lee tossing in two cents, or this or that. It's never where Brian Lee gets the focus, or Brian Lee gets the spotlight, but now Brian Lee cuts off Candido and questions why the Harris brothers interrupted his match when he didn't need them to show up. He could have beaten the Honky Tonk Man without Ron and Don. And this, you know, this leads, uh, leads the Harris brothers to, you know, step in front of Brian Lee to stop the tension. Sonny and Sonny, you know, to stop any tension and calm, calm all parties down. Mark Merrow and Shane Douglas. Mark Merrow gets the victory in the No Holds Barred match against Shane Douglas to get a little bit, a little bit of a revenge against his former Golden Franchise Tag Team partner. But the feud isn't over yet. Ve Speaking of Candido, you got his uh, cohort, Invader, 
as I mentioned earlier, you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna spend too much time on this. Vader is tired of Candido running, and he's gotta figure out a way to stop him from running, and in the process also challenges one of the Harris brothers to a match. You got Brian Clark going up against Rocco Rock. Slick helps his client win and get a rare victory for, and tonight, well, let me rephrase that. Tonight is a rare good night for Slick as two of his clients, Tony DeVito and Brian Clark, both get victories tonight. Now we move to the WWF champion, Ric Flair, who, much like the Rock and Roll Express, has no shortage of challengers, and he's ready for all comers. That's a little bit of a disappointing match. I thought it was going to do a little bit better, but I guess maybe there was some part that, you know, could have done better or whatever. Like, uh, like maybe if I let it go a little bit longer or, you know, whatever the case may be. But this is setting the stage for the next couple, you know, the bigger picture. Like, this isn't just a random occurrence. It's setting the stage for the bigger picture. Because as I mentioned, as I mentioned a few weeks ago, or in, I think, last week's episode, um, my main... My main, uh, I know the subject of the, th my main plan, that's the word, my main plan, as far as this series is concerned, is to take things slow and go little by little by little toward the ultimate goal of bringing together an era of attitude as opposed to jumping right in with both feet. And for that to happen, for that to happen, we need to plant the seeds and get things together. We can't just go like that, you know, like snap of the fingers and have things change. We need to progressively change things and make things different. We can't just make things different like that and have, you know, whatever that you know whatever you know cursing and blood and nudity and whatever we need to get there progressively not overnight and this show is another step in the right direction as far as getting there eventually and progressing towards an era of attitude as opposed to trying to get you know trying to get there overnight I know some people may not agree with long-term booking and having a big picture philosophy, but in my opinion, having a big picture philosophy and taking things slow allows things to flow together a little bit easier than going, you know, a hundred miles an hour from the, from the word go, because then you have to know where you're going before you get there and going slow makes it a lot easier to know where you're going before you get there than going 100 miles an hour from the word go. Because also I would like to point out that in most cases, at this point, in real WWE, they were nowhere close to the Attitude Era. The Attitude Era started kicking into full gear. I would probably put it maybe late 96, early 97, or sometime in 1997. So I would be a year ahead anyway, so the fact that I'm setting the stage for it, as opposed to, you know, setting the stage for it, means I'm l going to go there eventually. But the fact that I'm not there now doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going slower than actual WWE. But again, I would mention that I know some might, you know, some might think that certain people on the roster need to be out of the picture within the next year if I'm going to go to a more era of attitude. And I am thinking about that, but it depends if they can be used and help business like rock and roll, like the rock and roll express. Look at their segment. Look at Ricky Steamboat's segment. You know, two guys that I think most people would believe would not fit the era, you know, and, and, you know, that type of era 
or the match with Ricky, uh, Mickey, Mikey Whipwreck and Scott Taylor, but I'm not going to book. I can tell you right now, when the time comes and we're there, I won't book the my Attitude Era the way WWE booked theirs. Because you don't need to go 100 miles an hour every week. You can go slow, have a plan, and know where you're going. Because then it makes it makes it more worth it when you get there. And that's what that's all I can say when it comes to Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. And if you caught it during the Hollywood Blondes segment, yes, there is a plan in place for the future of the Hollywood Blondes. So those two things, those two things specifically, are going to be long term overarching storylines for the future as is Bret Hart and Owen Hart that has been developing since November of last year or actually that's been developing since WrestleMania you know since the end of WrestleMania last year but either way with with all this out of the way and another week of explanations it's time to say goodbye as we are done with another episode of Monday Night Raw, let me know down in the comment section below what you thought of the episode, and if you prefer my long-term ap approach and of setting everything up and putting all my ducks in a row before I head to the Attitude Era, as opposed to just jumping right in and starting to book in an over-the-top Crash TV type of way. Let me know what you would do in, in the comment section below. And if you have any ideas for talent that you might not be, that you might not, that you may think are not being booked to their potential, let me know down in the comment section below as well. With all that out of the way, don't forget to leave a, leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more content just like this that you can only find right here at Wrestling Express. And before you go, don't forget to ding on that notification bell to always know when a new video is up on the channel. Till next time, see you next week.